Hi drummers, Gary Williams is back with another reaction and analysis video. In today's video, we're going to be listening to the great Latin drummer, Horacio El Negro Hernandez. This guy is beyond belief when it comes to mechanical skill. So let's check him out. Here we go, Horacio. Left foot, rupa, clave, three, two. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, good shot of his feet there. So what's happening is the left foot's playing the 3-2 Roomba Clave, which he's famous for at this point, for people who've checked him out. I had three kind of what I call spiritual drumming experiences. The first one was hearing a record called Road Games by the great, now deceased guitarist, Alan Holdsworth, featuring Chad Wackerman. I was just shocked and awed at his playing. Not only how great it was, but how creative it was. Like, how did he even think of doing the stuff he did, let alone how did he do what he was doing? The second one was actually seeing Vinnie Colaiuta at a Percussive Art Society International Convention in Hollywood, California, when I was an undergraduate student. That just freaked me out. I'd never heard anybody play drums with so much fluidity and creativity, and just the ideas were, again, on another level. And then the third experience was this guy. I watched a modern drummer festival early on with Horacio El Negro Hernandez, and I was just completely <laughs> blown away, which subsequently got me into his book. So we'll talk about that more, but that was a great shot of his feet there where he's playing the rumba clave, the 3-2 on the left foot cowbell pedal, and then the right foot's playing primarily what's known as tumbao. And that's the Spanish word for bass, this is my understanding. It's the bass rhythm, which is played on the bass guitar, also the bass drum. The basses are together. And that's what he's playing primarily, although he's doing different parts. Now, the beauty about Horacio, besides this phenomenal level of multi-coordination, where his feet are really kind of, at least the right hand, left hand, and right foot can become almost out of time, interdependent, are independent from the left foot playing the clave. But he has this concept of playing in like 8-8 eight, eight, and 6-8 where he's going back and forth between So he mixes 8-8 eight, eight, and 6-8, eight, this idea where he plays in a more of a triplet based subdivision against a more of an even rhythmic subdivision. So that's kind of what we're starting to get a taste of. Let's continue. Bop, 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 left foot, pop fake. Almost mixed between cascada patterns and mambo patterns and a little bit of songo. Gradually speeding up the tempo. That's a cool little thing he likes to do that where he plays left hand ding 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 like eighth notes and right hand double stops meaning playing ink same thing with both hands left hand on a loose hi-hat right hand around the drums and then double kick so he's did really kind of nice thing going on here Now, now, right here, you see how you can hear click, 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 because that's the left foot clave. He uses that too. And then he's got the hi hat. So his foot travels back and forth. So, but, ch, got, ch, got, ch, got, ch, got. so the clave, cross stick, jam blocks on the downbeat, and ch, 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 
is on the offbeat. It looks like feet are together. Kind of hard to track. No, they're different. Yeah, left foot. Okay, those are like four up, two down. Congratulations. Four against three pollen. Turn that into a Afro six. Oh, that was it. Oh, great sample of the great Horacio El Negro Hernandez. Again, I was talking about the, um, you know, going through his book. Um, conversations in clave so after i saw him play it was like okay that's the next thing i got to start working on and i actually started the book and five years later completed it i took long breaks <laughs> but it was so complex because i really wanted to go through it very thoroughly he based it on gary chester's book the new breed it's an afro-cuban new breed is what he called it in an article i read on him and so he went through the New Breed, which is like one of the most advanced books. But then you got this Conversations in Clave, which is based on the same process where you have systems, vocalizations of your voice going through the different appendages, just like Gary Chester's New Breed. Same concept. That's why he called it an Afro-Cuban New Breed, in my opinion. And then you do things open-handed. So you're playing Cascada with the left hand and learning to improvise with the right. Cascada, which is this two major rhythmic pattern played on the side of a timbali for a salsa pattern. Anyways, and then the left hand improvises. And so, and then all the time I chose the song clave. Da, 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 da. It was a little easier. It goes with the tomb bow. So it fits with the kick drum a little bit smoother on the three side than the rumba. And, you know, I wanted to do something that would work for me that was similar, but not exactly. And when I met Horacio, I asked him, why did you choose the rumba clave instead of the song clave when you did all this left foot clave stuff? His answer was, why not? <laughs> it wasn't very specific. Um, but he's ended up using that clave almost exclusively, near as I can tell. And it actually, the 8-8 rumba clave kind of fits very nicely with the Afro-Cuban 6-8 rumba clave. So I really use the song clave when I'm playing more 4-4 or 8-8, and I use the, the rumba clave in 6-8 when I'm doing the 6-8 kind of stuff. So, But some great stuff going on. Man, the independence is just phenomenal that he has. And the breathing in and out of even and odd subdivisions. And at the end there, he kind of opened it up. A little bit of double bass stuff. I've heard some stuff of his more recently where he really kind of is playing a little bit more like some of the other mainstream drummers. And kind of the Latin influence is there, but it's being tucked to the back a bit more. At least during a big portion of some of these more passic you know, Percussive Art Society International Convention videos I glanced at prior to selecting this one. I just kind of click on them, listen to, you know, a few seconds, see if the sound is good, if it's a good camera angle. Plus, I kind of like to get some of the earlier stuff of these great players. I guess I just, I prefer that era when I was introduced to them, and they're evolving as well. But anyways, that's the great Horacio El Negro Hernandez. This guy is phenomenal, and he first came on the scene to my attention as a recording artist with the great Afro-Cuban pianist Michelle Camillo, who I'd followed for many years with Dave Weckles playing, Joel Rosenblatt, and then there's another guy, can't remember his name off the top of my head, that played with him for quite a while, amongst others. But then this one album that had Horacio on that a keyboard player friend of mine introduced me two years ago who's really into that kind of salsa jazz, and I... It was, again, almost like the Alan Holdsworth Road Games album, where it was just amazing the way he sounded. He reminded me of an Afro-Cuban Vinny Cagliuta, quite literally. So, anyways, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in lessons. The text box below has my contact information. And I'll see you on the next reaction and analysis video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.